Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone's having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we have a beautiful scripture. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 12, which says, But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Jesus had called Matthew to follow him as one of his disciples. Matthew was a tax collector, which was one of the most despised people in Israel. Tax collectors were Jewish men who took money from other Israelites and gave most of it to occupying Rome, and the remainder they could keep, as was allowed by the Romans, as payment for their service. And in many ways, many of the tax collectors would rob the people, and they often become very wealthy. So most Jewish people saw tax collectors as greedy traitors. It would have been a scandal in that culture for a righteous man like Jesus to invite a tax collector to become his disciple. And worse than that, Matthew had hosted a dinner party at his home with his friends. And these friends were other tax collectors and sinners. And sinners used in this passage is those people who were unwelcome in religious society because they didn't follow the traditions of the Pharisees or in some cases the law itself. That's not to say that they were innocent of sin, but their actions were certainly immoral. But these people were identified by their sins in that culture. The Pharisees made accusations asking Jesus, his disciples, why Jesus eats with these kinds of people, something they would never do. Now Jesus answers them in a way that both explains his actions and exposes the Pharisees. He says healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Jesus was not declaring that the Pharisees were not healthy, but pointing out that they saw themselves that way. Jesus told them, that he was there to help people who knew that they were sick spiritually speaking. They understood their need for a savior, that they needed help, and they were open to the truth that they needed the saving. Two important applications come from the statement. First, the purpose of good works and evangelism is to reach the lost. Christians are not called to barricade themselves away from anyone that they see as a sinner. Of course, it's important to guard our friendships and associations but believers cannot live out love in Jesus while avoiding all possible contact with lost people. Professing Christians or churches who turn their nose up to sinners is like a doctor or hospital that refuse to associate with sick people. Second, Jesus was not condoning the wrong choices that these people had made, that he spent his time with, but he was showing love and kindness. I mean, it doesn't imply that he endorses everything that they were doing. Jesus was introducing them to himself as the only way to be forgiven and redeemed. He was showing them the true face of God, which is full of love and compassion for them. The Pharisees thought that they were well. They saw themselves as righteously pure and whole. The outcasts knew that they were not. Salvation cannot come to self-righteous people. The Pharisees complained because Jesus ate with these sinners. To eat with someone meant that you accepted their lifestyle. The Pharisees would not eat with such people. They asked the disciples why Jesus ate with such people. Jesus had heard what they said. He said it's the healthy who need a doctor, not the sick. He tells the Pharisees to learn a lesson from the Old Testament. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. There Hosea had shown that God's desire is not merely legal religion, but love and kindness are much more important. Without love for God, religion is of no value. Also, real religion must show love and kindness to other people. Jesus came to this world to save sinners. He came to offer them the opportunity to repent. Jesus goes where he's needed. But many of the Pharisees thought that they were good enough already. They would admit that they're sinners as well. They didn't believe that they needed God to save them from their sins. Jesus did not come for people who liked that. So Jesus had nothing to offer them. That's the same with people today. There's people that think that they don't have no sin. That they got everything figured out. And Jesus didn't come for them. Why? Because they're rejecting his offer to save them from their sin. They say they don't got no sins, they don't need him. So he didn't come for them. That's why he says here, it's the sick that need a doctor, not someone as well. And why did Jesus associate with these sinners? Because we need him to associate with us. Jesus' desire is to love and to save us. And when we recognize our need for him, and we realize without him, our sinfulness would only lead us to destruction if we don't acknowledge our need for Jesus' love and grace. 
then the Lord's sacrifice, what he did on the cross for us, will be lost. So let's acknowledge our need for his mercy and his love and grace. But if you take anything out of this video today, take this. Jesus goes where he's needed. So if you need, if you are seeking something today, trust me, you will not find it in this world. All this world offers you is empty promises. Like I always say, it's a, like drug and alcohol, the high, the buzz, they wear off. Everything this world offers is empty promises. It'll let you down every time. But if you need, if you're seeking something today, just know Jesus goes where he's needed. And Jesus will meet any need you may have. That's why we share the gospel at the end of every video. We want you to know the one who will meet any need you may have. Who will never let you down. So if you've gotten to this point of the video today and you don't know Jesus. Maybe you don't want to know him. Maybe you're playing games with God today. Maybe you intellectually know who Jesus is and you know what he did on the cross. But when hard times come, you don't run to him because you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to talk to him to pray to read the Bible. Well, I believe that you're here for a reason. Listen to this video. I don't believe you're here by accident. I believe the Lord has given you one more opportunity to get to know him today. And it may be your last opportunity. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We could die today. This is why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you who Jesus is. I want to show you what he did for you on the cross, and I want to show you what it means for you. So listen to the words. Don't turn the video. Just keep listening. Accept the words of the gospel of what Jesus did for you. Apply the words of the gospel to your life and allow the gospel to change you. The gospel in a nutshell is because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. And this is because all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, which means because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There is a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve punishment. We all deserve eternal separation from God, which means a life in hell. But here's the mercy of God. He loves you so much that he sent his only son who left his throne in heaven and became a flesh and blood human. 100% fully God and fully man. And he lived a perfect sinless life. And on the cross, he became sin for us to pay for our sins. Which means when Jesus was on the cross, he put our sins on himself like a garment. And they died on the cross with him. Jesus took the punishment for our sins because as I've said, there is a punishment. But we are the ones who sin. We are the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus who was innocent of death because he never sinned, he took our punishment, the punishment we rightly deserve, Jesus took that punishment in our place. You see, we're all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you accept the words of the gospel, when you apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you, then it's like you're putting a washing machine. You're washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. You're washed white as snow. And when you believe the gospel message and are saved, then you put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get into heaven. Jesus is the door to enter heaven. There are not multiple ways to get into heaven and no one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad can't confess that you've been a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn it. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' blood on the cross is the ticket. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took our punishment. And Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from the eternity in hell. And that's what we see in our scripture today. When Jesus says it's not, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, it's the sick. He's telling the Pharisees that their sins need to be covered by the blood, but they didn't want to accept. But if you sincerely believe in Jesus and turn your life to him, which means you're not just saying words, you're not trying to please someone, you're not looking for a get out of hell free card. But you really do believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for the cross. And you truly want to live from now, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift of grace that he has extended to you right now. All you got to do is reach out and grab it. Just accept it today. Because you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. You can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it's not going to matter how much you've given a cherry. Or that you think I've been a good person all my life. I've never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. 
It is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works that same man should boast. This grace is an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We do not deserve it, which means we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. We don't even deserve for Jesus to come down for us. But God loves us so very much that by his grace, he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation today, that free ticket into heaven. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept the words of the gospel that you just heard. Apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you. And we always follow the gospel with a dire warning of Jesus' imminent return. Because right now you can personally know Jesus for yourself. But one thing is for sure, and the Bible is clear, we are not guaranteed tomorrow. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still the time. Because tomorrow may be one day too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, everybody haven't came to Jesus yet. Maybe you're waiting until your children grow up and move out. Maybe you're waiting until you're finished secure in your life. Maybe you don't think you're good enough, and you don't know what I've done. But whatever excuse it may be that you're telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer. Because there is no guarantee that you will live to see tomorrow. And if you die before you come to Jesus, then when you stand before God, it's sweet too late to make excuses why you didn't come to Jesus before. So turn to Jesus today while you still the time. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer, but these are just templates. An outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, the words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer, a sincere cry from your heart that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And what you're doing is admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus. You believe in who Jesus is and what he did for the cross. You repent of your sins, which means you're turning away from your sins. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept the words of the gospel, apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you, allow him to change you, and he could take away whatever you're struggling with if you let him. Well, I pray you got something out of this, but never take my word for it. And don't seek someone else's advice. Go to the source for yourself because no one on this earth has the answers. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world. They do not have the answers you're looking for. Only God does. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses, doing a Google search list of someone read or preach for a few minutes. You won't get the full picture and they won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. You see, the Bible will strengthen you and it will help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle, whatever hard time you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible is our road map, our GPS, our lantern, our flashlight, whatever analogy you want to use. But you see, the Bible will help you to navigate to this crazy, ever darkening world that we're living in. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of this video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries. Or we'll see you in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. Let's go.